Hey everybody, welcome to this month's What's New video. My name is Dave Hedeman. I'm a senior sales engineer with Trimble. And um, there's a new feature in Service Pack 4 of Tecla Structures 2024 that just came out about two weeks ago uh, that I wanted to share with you. And then I noticed in the release notes a couple other improvements that I thought might be also worth sharing. Um, so first off, the new feature. In Tecla Structures 2024, there was a new option added to copy properties to the clipboard. So this means if I were to copy the properties of this beam, I could then highlight another beam and paste those values to the new beam. And here we can see what it's lighting up in yellow what's about to be pasted to this beam. So if I were to paste, it's now pasting those two properties to the beam. Well, here's the improvement. Um, you may have noticed when I hit the copy to clipboard button, there's now these little icons on each um, line that, you know, this is actually what is about to be copied to the clipboard, what's gonna be placed on the clipboard. So if I wanted to copy everything about this beam, except for the class, I can actually deselect that option. And then now when I go to paste this information on this beam and I hover over the paste button, you can see that it's about to paste the profile but is not pasting the class. So when I click, I can see that the profile changes, but not the class. So that's kind of nice being able to deselect some of the things that I don't want. But one of the other neat things that I found is instead of going down there to hit the copy to clipboard button first, when I select an object, I can hover and you can see that we're getting those little copy icons as we hover over each field. So if I highlighted this beam and I said, you know what, I wanna copy just this shape over to these other two beams, but without changing their classes, I can just come up here and hit copy and then highlight this beam and paste, highlight this beam and paste. And you can see that it is not changing the class, it's only changing the profile. So it gives us a little bit more of a finer control about what's pasting what's copying in this uh, function. And I love the fact that when I hover over this, it's actually showing me a preview of what's about to be pasted. So it's a minor improvement to the uh, the copy to clipboard functionality, but it caught my eye in the, in the service pack four. I wanted to bring it to your attention as well so that you guys could try it out and give us some feedback and tell us what you think about it. Um, but also, like I said, I started looking through the release notes and I found a couple other little improvements. So um, first off, let me show you the swap handles functionality in older versions of Tecla structures. I'm gonna pull up a video here. And we can see that when I have something like an angle and I run swap handles, it does indeed flip the member, but the handle location isn't really kept the way I would want it to be. It forces me to go through the um, properties pane and modify it, um, or it forces me to use the contextual toolbar to, to locate its position better. Um, but this was the way it, it behaved. And now let's take a look at how it behaves now. Um, so if I come in here and I grab this angle that's modeled in a very similar fashion, and I go over to my component catalog and I search for swap, um, when I run the swap handles macro, not only is it going to swap the handles, but it also keeps them in a logical position. It's actually changing the position values of the part in addition to swapping the handles. So it's literally flipping it on its axis rather than simply swapping the handles. And now we've got you know handles on the toes that we then have to adjust. It's a little quality of life improvement, but I really, really like this. I'm happy to see it in here. And I just wanted to share it with, um, with all of you. Um, also an improvement is uh, in 2023, we introduced the ability to have tapped holes. So if I come over here and we look at the properties of this bolt, um, under the special hole option, there is a tapped option so that this can be translated over to our CNC data. Um, well, the improvement in service pack four is in the DSTV to DXF converter. So if I just come in here and search for DSTV, um, there are two new things that have been added. One being on the environment tab, there is a draw tapped holes dropdown where I can set it to be the core hole size, the nominal diameter, which is just the diameter of the bolt, or don't do anything. 
And then over on this tab here for tapped, uh, tapped holes, you can create new layers for those special hole types. Now in the default, this is blank. I just went and created two different layers just to show this as an example. Um, so I've created uh, a layer name three quarter, layer name seven eighths. What this first column is going to look at is the actual bolt size used. So if I click on you know, this bolt group here and I go to my properties again, for this back group of holes, I used a 7 8 inch bolt. And for the front group of holes, I used a 3 quarter inch bolt. So this first column, it's actually looking at the bolt size used. That's a critical thing. It's not using the core hole or any of this information down here at this time. So it's going to look at this value. And if it sees that I'm calling for a 3 quarter inch bolt, you can set what the core uh, hole size should be in the DXF export here. It is not looking at the properties here. This is just for note purposes. Okay. So that's a little, you know, one of those things, it's a step forward uh, into getting this tapped hole functionality, but just something to be aware of. It's not reading this data here. You're setting the actual hole size here. Okay. Um, so that's another uh, little improvement that I picked up in SP4. And there's, there's a lot more, but the last one that I want to talk about is, um, an improvement to S76. And again, I'm going to pull up a video here. So in S76, if you have a main part, the first part of a stringer that is longer than the fitting, you can run into an issue where the parts keep continuing up in space and they're not actually connecting to the steel. And you can see it's because that handle, the actual end handle of the part is modeled way out there in space. Now, that's poor modeling behavior. It shouldn't be like that to begin with. Um, but that's still an issue that if something happens, if something's modeled a certain way, that can cause a problem. So let's take a look at how it works now in uh, Service Pack 4 of 2024. So I have a very similar situation. I've deliberately modeled this part with a handle way out in space. Again, I'm trying to trigger that same sort of behavior. Um, but if I go into my S76, and we just go ahead and apply it to this, um, you know, kind of fake stringer run. I'm going to set my start point and my end point, and I'm going to pick on the parts that I need to apply to in middle mouse. And we can see that it's gone ahead and correctly placed that top post. So like I said, this wasn't something that popped up a lot, but I saw it often enough that I knew, you know, what I was looking at when it would happen. So it's just another little quality of life improvement. And again, this is based on the kind of feedback we get from you guys. So when you see issues like this uh, or like that first video, you know, let us know. That's how stuff like this gets fixed. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Um, like I said, kind of a short one, but these are improvements that I noticed in Service Pack 4. And I thought that everybody um, might also find them as interesting as I do. Um, so go ahead and leave some comments down below. Let me know uh, what you think about these improvements or anything else that you think we should improve. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next month.